Hey there people, it's your favorite Weedle Twin Needle bringing you out another Series 13 narrated VGC video. So if you guys do enjoy the narrated Sword and Shield or just Pokemon battling content in general and want to support the content on my channel, please be sure to leave a like on the video, watch until the end of the video, and maybe share the video with a friend who might enjoy it as well. All that really does help out the channel a lot more than you think. Also, really big shout outs to those who have left a super thanks so on my much. recent content. It's a new feature YouTube added recently where you can show extra financial support to creators you really enjoy. Of course, it's not necessary, just watching really means the world, but the extra financial support is much appreciated because you've just broke. Now, Celebi is one of my personal favorite mythical. It's in Pokemon Coliseum when you use like the time flute and stuff. It's really cool how it's like tied in with purification and it can like time travel. It's in like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Celebi is like cute. And in the Celebi movies it's been in have been pretty cute as well. But Celebi in competitive has mostly fallen off both in popularity and viability. So I made a community poll asking what sort of Celebi set y'all would want to see. And I left a few options, you know. And surprisingly, the one that got the most votes was Paris Song. And you know, I thought that would get the least amount of votes, so you want to know what? I decided to make this Celebi team and try to make the best Parish team possible while also incorporating a bunch of gimmicks, basically. And so we have the Celebi team. And of course, Parish Song has to have Gothitelle. You have the Parish, but you kind of need the trap, right? And then we also have Lapras, who also gets Parish Song, and my husband in Cinemore because Fake Out Intimidate Cycling is really, really nice. And then Restricted Legendaries, I decided to use a Yvoltal because Yvoltal is really, really good, and Eternatus because because I got my hands on a shiny Eternatus code and I wanted to use it, so we're using the shiny Eternatus. Now my first opponent today, Hijack's VGC, has a very threatening team. They're packing Kyogre, Zacian, Dialga, Whimsicott, Groundon, and Yvoltal as well. So overall, five legendaries and a Whimsicott, and that's just like Series 13 summed up in general. Like you'd think that people would want to use Mythicals, right? But the reality is that people are just going to use like five Restricteds and it's kind of, it's kind of ugly in that regard. But I'm not here to complain. Let's just get into this battle. All right, so we're up against Hijack's VGC. And there's one thing I have learned about people who have VGC in their name, and that's they are a try hard. They are trying 110% to win. And there's nothing wrong with that. Winning is fun. Losing is kind of unfun. But you got to be on your A game when you fight people with VGC in their name. Like 99% of the time, if they have VGC in their name, they are going to destroy you. You know what I mean? Like, it's just the scary aura they have, you know? Maybe, maybe I'm just overthinking it, but they're good enough with Kyogre and Evoltol, the Shining Stars, both legit Shinies, because while my opponent isn't playing VGC, they're Shiny Hunting at the night, you know what I mean? Like, if VGC try hard during the day, Shiny Hunter during the night. So I'm going to intimidate both, you know, Evoltol and Kyogre, and I was trying to think, like, which one of these Pokemon is going to click turn one Brain Die D-Max? And unfortunately, I guessed incorrectly, as they're going to Dynamax, they're going to Dynamax, that's right, they're going to Dynamax, they're Kyogre. And I thought they were going to Dynamax Evoltol, so I decided to go for the fake out into Kyogre, thinking that it would just click Water Spout. But no, I got my ass red on Tuesday, and I'm gonna go for Dual Wing Beat into my Celebi, as it's going to do a lot of damage. But you know, we're able to live it because the Intimidate, and if they had like Life Orb Dark Pulse instead of like Physical Evoltol, which Physical Evoltol is kind of weird, I definitely would have just died because Evoltol is really good. But they decide to go for Max Geyser into Incineroar, and I'm going to get washed away. My poor husbando is going to get washed away. Speaking of Max Geyser, let me... Hmm. My throat's kind of bothering me today, sorry. Um, I'm going to go for Parish Song. You know, we're going to set up the Parish, which is like the whole idea for this team, right? And now, because husbando died, I get to bring in Gothitelle for free. But instead of keeping it in, I'm like, wait a minute. I can't go for Fake Out because I will just get double targeted. And if I go for Protect, Dynamax is fair and balance, and they will like hit me through Protect. So I decide to do a bait and switch into my Lapras to take the Dark move and hopefully Water move as well. As thankfully my opponent just blindly goes for Max Geyser and we're able to absorb it and get all of our health back basically. It's like we didn't even take damage this turn besides a little bit of chip. And now I can go for the U-turn and the reason why we went for U-turn is because the very important thing about Parish Trap is that Shadow Tag has to be active for like all the turns or else they could just switch out, right? So I'm going to bring back in my Gothitelle with the U-turn and uh, now I can actually make a pretty big brain play, right? So instead of going for Fake Out, I know better and uh, Max Geyser will destroy me. So I go for Protect instead of going for Fake Out, which I really wanted to, but I knew that even if I faked out the uh, Yvoltal, Max Geyser will one-shot me, even though I have a lot of special defense. Like, one, look at this damage through Protect. It does one-fourth damage through Protect, and that did over a fourth my HP, so I would have died. And I go for Dive. Speaking of Dive, I go for Dive. Let me take another sip of water. Mm. 
dive in that water and we're gonna get some leftovers as well and this is like one of my favorite techs on the team is this lapras set right here because while we're underwater we're obviously slower than the opponent and um now they're going to this last turn repair so i can just click protect or i already click protect so instead of going for protect i go for ally switch the win button because while we're underwater we might as well switch positions so the opponents cannot target into the Gothitelle slap, but we're going to avoid it. And they go for Thunder into the Gothitelle as well. Now the thing with Thunder is that because it's raining, I'm not too sure if it hits me while I'm diving because Thunder can't miss in the rain. But I think that only happens with Fly. Like if they went for Surf and I didn't have Water Absorb, I would have been hit. But Thunder while you're diving, I'm pretty sure it doesn't hit you. I could be wrong though. Maybe Thunder would have hit me and they're like 8 million IQ and no more than me. But either way, like some Pokemon nerd that knows more than me somehow should let me know how that works in the comments because I'm kind of curious if Thunder would have hit Lapras if I didn't ally switch. But yeah, um, we got the first Parish Song to knock out both Kyogre and Evoltal and now in comes the next legendaries on the plate. They bring in the Zacian and the Elga. So, um, <laughs> legendary round two. <laughs> fight <laughs> i only have one restricted on this team i don't i don't even think i brought any restricteds in this game actually i just brought fallout parish because i just wanted to parish trap them you know what i mean like i didn't think that yvoltal and eternatus were gonna be enough to carry me so i decided to just go full out parish and they're gonna go for behemoth blade right here i decided to just you know switch out of my gothitelle so i can keep fake up for later and i figured that my uh, lapras could live any hit Behemoth Blade does way more than I was expecting, but thankfully they just go for the attack into the Gothitelle slot and uh, we're able to survive with Celebi. And now we can go for the second Parish Song with our Lapras after consuming our Citrus Fairy. And at this point, this is like the win condition you want with Parish Trap because if you're in a 3v2 or 4v2 situation, you can just stall out with Parish and just win the game. So um, unfortunately, it's currently a 3v2 and it's, I'm currently not that far ahead. So I, I actually have Custat Berry on my Lapras, okay? And I go for the dive, and Zacian put us in the range to where Custet Berry would activate. We're gonna outspeed both Zacian and the Dialga. Unfortunately, Zacian decides to target into my poor Celebi, so Celebi is going to get deleted from the game, but that's okay. Um, Celebi, after it sets up Parasong and, uh, you know, gets a U-turn out, all it really can do is go for another Parasong or Healing Wish. So, yeah, that's just kind of the unfortunate thing about Celebi is that Power Creep has not been kind to it, so it dying is not too big of a deal. But now I'm gonna bring Gothitelle, and I could go for Fake Out, but instead, yeah, I just go for Fake Out. Okay, I, I, sh I should have probably clicked Protect because, um, and you actually, no, I know what I wanted to do. So I Faked Out into the Dialga because if Dialga carries Trick Room, if Dialga carries Trick Room and they set up Trick Room, I think I actually lose the game if Gothitelle goes down. And Gothitelle did just go down. So if the opponent sets up Trick Room and then Lapras becomes the fastest Pokemon on the field, I will lose the Parish Song Endgame. So I'm pretty much praying that my opponent isn't 500 IQ and knows to set up Trick Room on this last turn of Parish. So I'm going to go for Max Guard right here. I'm going to Dynamax my Lapras because why not, right? And they go for Behemoth Blade with their Zacian and they don't go for Trick Room. So if they went for Trick Room, they would have been uh, slower than me. Lapras would have died first and we would actually lose the game. But instead, because they didn't go for Trick Room, or maybe they didn't have Trick Room, I have no idea. Um, Parish Song is going to knock out both Dialga and Zacian and then... My Lapras is the last one going to faint from the Parish Song. So Lapras will go down, but that means we're going to win because we were the last one standing. So yes, we're going to win the game just barely. That is a very common win condition you have to go off of with Parish Song. So it looks like we barely scraped by, but it was all calculated. So hopefully you all enjoyed that Parish Trap. I didn't bring any restricted. I ate that up. Hopefully you all enjoyed that battle and let's move on to the next one. My next opponent, Ko, has a really interesting team. They have a Galvantula, Blastoise, and my Husbando in Cinevore. So even though they have three of the strongest legendaries in existence, at least they're trying some different stuff. So they got respect for that. But without further ado, let's get into this battle and look at Ko's trainer card. She's eating that shit up with that rainbow. Like, I love that for her. And meanwhile, me, I just still have the same basic bitch trainer card that I haven't changed in like two years. Well, I don't know what, Scarlet and Violet is right around the corner. And that trainer card is iconic. IDC, hopefully Scarlet and Violet will have good customization options as well. But they're going to lead off with the Galvantula, so I'm happy to see that. And the Calyrex, so I'm not very happy to see. But that's exactly why I left with my Evoltal. Because the Evoltal is like the only Pokemon that can really check Calyrex Shadow Rider. Because it's, you know, Calyrex Shadow Rider. Kind of a crazy Pokemon. And uh, Galvantula is cool to see. And Galvantula actually threatens my Evoltal, kind of. Because they can go for, you know, Thunders and paralyze me and do some decent damage. So that's kind of scary. But, you know, if I lose the Galvantula, I lost the Galvantula. You know what I mean? So I'm going to target down this Calyrex no matter what. As the opponent actually makes a smart pivot 
into the Kyogre as I do Dynamax turn 1. I go for the Brain Dead turn 1 D-Max this time around because this is the second mode I have on this team. I'm going to go for the Ice Shard into the Kyogre to break a potential Focus Sash on the Calyrex Shadow Rider. I figured that was really important because if Calyrex Shadow Rider was Sash, I definitely wanted to break that. And I figured that Galvantula with the Electro Web would, you know, activate our weakness policy. So that's really good for us. And now what we can do is we can just go for the max airstream and obliterate this Kyogre. So Kyogre is going to go down to the max airstream. You don't want to worry about Kyogre collecting water spout or max geyser. But speaking of max geyser, I should really take another sip of water. Um, I don't have my voice completely here today. I'm sorry about that. Anyway, my opponent is going to bring in the Blastoise here. And speaking of water, they're going to Dynamax their Blastoise and they're about to hit us with a ton of water because they know we are dehydrated. They're gonna click Electroweb with their Galvantula to lower the speed on Yvoltal. That's a really smart play because now Blastoise can't move the rain boosted Cannonade. And I'm thinking, oh, Yvoltal is going to die and I'm about to lose that Galvantula. And I'm like, oh, please, I'm so dead to this Cannonade. They're gonna go for Cannonade. It does nothing? Um, okay. I thought that would do way more damage, but you know what? I am a Dynamax Uber and they're just the least privileged Kanto starter. So they thought they ate with that G-Max evolution, but no, Blastoise is a flop. It's true, it's true. But yeah, down goes G-Max Blastoise to the Max Darkness. Um, unfortunately for them, the candidate doesn't want to chop me, but the important thing about the Kanto G-Max moves is that it applies a very broken dot that does, what is it, one sixth of your max HP for four turns. And the Calyrex really appreciates that because it can go for Astral Barrage and get some late game cleans with the, you know, Astral Barrage and stuff. So I decided to go for the max guard on this last turn of Dynamax because I don't want to give the Calyrex free boosts. Um, I decided to do that because I will, you know, lose if I give this Calyrex too much opportunity to snowball. But I, did, I do realize at the moment that it is a 4v2 and this is the perfect condition for a Parish Song. So after, you know, face tanking both those attacks with the Lapras, we're gonna go for the Parish Song. And now both the Calyrex Shadow Rider and Galvantula will die in three turns. And that's really awesome for me because I have four Pokemon. So even without Shadow Tag, you can still go for Parish Song and win with it. You just gotta know the right conditions to click it. You know what I mean? Like Parish Song isn't entirely reliant on trapping. And I wanted to make that clear with this team because some people think that Parish Trap just has to be traps. And that's, you know, kind of true. But there's other modes you can do with Parish Song, and well-built Parish teams don't entirely rely on Parish Song. I'm not trying to say this is a well-built team, but you know, I mean, I'm just saying. Anyway, Astral Barrage is going to obliterate my Lapras. I, you know what? Oh my god, I got really mad here. I, I just got like a flashback. I tried to go for a Custap Berry Dive, right? But because Calyrex has two abilities, it has Unnerve and just ignores my Custap Berry from being activated, and I miscalculated there. And I was pissed. I was like, oh, I hate Calyrex so much because Calyrex, th that was just evil. Like, I don't care what you have, what, <laughs> I just hate Calyrex, okay? Like, I like it sometimes, but then I hate it because it could just do that. Why does it have two abilities? Even though, like, a nerve isn't even, like, the better of the two abilities. In this situation, it worked out. Actually, you know what? Galvantula also gets unnerved. So let's pretend Galvantula did that to us, okay? We're gonna pretend that that was Galvantula destroying me and not the Calyrex, okay? Okay, even though Galvantula more than likely carries compound eyes, but yeah, here I decided to not click double protect because why do I click double protect here? Why do I do that? Oh, you know what? I remember. Okay, so I was petty. This is like a petty play. I was making the most optimal petty play. So I let my Pokemon go down to Astral Barrage so the opponent thinks that Calyrex will just win the game, right? With their Grimnay boosts, but... No, I still have Gothitelle in the back, and even though I said we don't need Shadow Tag, I still like to keep Gothitelle in the back because Fake Out, Ally Switch, Helping Hand are all extremely useful moves even without, you know, Parish Trapping and Shadow Tagging being a thing. So now I'm going to bring in my Gothitelle. And then my last move over those three annoying supporting moves is Protect. So I'm just going to go click this Protect right now, and they realize they're like, wait... It doesn't matter, my Calyrex has plus a million boosts. This is the last turn of Parish Song. And um, yeah, they just like take a while to pick their moves. And then yeah, I just click Protect and they just died a Parish Song. So another game where Parish Song wins us the game. I didn't even have to go for the Parish Song like end game like this. I could have just double protect with, you know, Goth with uh, Evolta and Eternatus as well. But I just decided to be petty as hell. Let them get the double kills and then do it the last turn with Gothitelle, so. 
yeah, we're able to kill both of those Pokemon with Parish Song, and Gothel is actually going to survive because it wasn't hit by Parish Song. So, hopefully, you all enjoyed that battle against Ko. Shoutouts to them for bringing Galvantula, though I was kind of petty to them. I still respect them for having, you know, Pokemon that aren't all restricted legendaries. So, hopefully, you all enjoyed that battle, and let's move on to the next one. My next opponent has Jigglypuff and then five legendaries, so I don't really have much else to say besides the fact they have Jigglypuff and five legendaries. Let's just get into this battle um, against, uh, I can't read that name, with a 39 number trainer card. Why do they have 39 for the trainer card? I have no idea, but let's get into this battle in this basic bitch trainer stadium because they didn't even bother messing with the trainer card. So they're going to lead off with Yavoltal, not Yavoltal, they're going to lead off with Calyrex and the uh, so, so Galio. I'm going to leave with Yavoltal and Gothitelle, that's right. Because I know that they're likely to go for the Bulldoze thing with the weakness policy, So Galio, because I'm the master of weakness policy, you can't fool me, so yeah. Um, they're actually going to switch out of their Calyrex turn 1, and they're going to bring out the said Jigglypuff, the myth, the legend, the Jigglypuff. They're going to bring it out right here, right now. As I'm going to go for the Brain Dead turn 1 Dynamax with my Yavoltal, go for the Helping Hand, because I thought they were going to Dynamax their Solgaleo turn 1 and then click the max move, right? But instead they go for Protect with their Solgaleo and bring in the Jigglypuff. So I'm like, hmm, they didn't go for the Brain Dead move turn 1. That must mean they have a plan. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I've used Jigglypuff before. I know your tricks. You're not gonna fool me. So um, they're gonna activate their weakness policy through Protect, which is like, you know, that's cool. Because I could just hit them next turn. Unless they had a move that could like, you know, protect the Solgaleo. So I go for Helping Hand, knowing very well that Jigglypuff gets the win button, the ally switch. So they're gonna click the win button right here. And they're like, ha ha, I got you. No. Honey, I we saw right, right through, through you. Max Darkness into the Jigglypuff predicting ally switch. I've used Jigglypuff before in my Smash Bros. VGC video, and that was a pretty good video. I know that shit gets ally switch with Friend Guard, that's the only reason you use it. So they thought they ate with that. Sorry, honey. You're in top 500 Master Ball ELO right now. You can't just gimmick me like that. I even recorded that too. <laughs> okay. So uh, they're going to bring in the Zacian right now. And Zacian has Friend Guard active, so that's kind of scary. Zacian's actually really, 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 really bulky. So I'm going to switch out my Gothitelle and bring in Incineroar to get some Intimidates off onto the Jigglypuff and the Zacian. Not that Jigglypuff, you know, has the highest attack stat, but Jigglypuff is the real threat here. Jigglypuff carried my Smash Bros video. I know not to underestimate that thing. So they're going to go for Behemoth Blade into my Yavoltal, I believe. Yeah, they're going to go for Behemoth Blade into Yavoltal, as that is going to do a butt ton of damage, but we're able to survive. And now I can go for Max Airstream and do some decent damage to Zacian. Not too, too much, but I just did it for the speed boost because I need to outspeed the Zacian. And hopefully this Jigglypuff doesn't randomly carry Thunder Wave. That would be kind of annoying, but either way, um, they're intimidated, so it's not too big of a deal. They just go for the Shadow Ball. Why did they have Shadow Ball? Um, oh, it's probably to activate the weakness policy on Solgaleo. You know what? Yeah, that's probably what it's for. So they're going to Shadow Ball into Incineroar, get the special defense drop because Incineroar doesn't like balls in his face. I know from experience, Incineroar doesn't like that very much. So we are going to go for the Oblivion Wing right here into this Jigglypuff because you know what? I took way too much shift damage. Let me get that back. So we're going to go for the um, Oblivion Wing and just get our health fully healed because you both a fair balance Pokemon. I love using it. I'm not even going to lie. It's a guilty pleasure. It's, it's kind of broken. It's a little broken. Okay. So they're going to bring in the Calyrex. I use this thing because of that Pokemon right there, okay? Like, I have an excuse. So Calyrex versus two Dark types. I'm not too worried because I have a special weapon with this Yvotol. Of course, you know, Yvotol can knock out this Calyrex easily, right? But my secret weapon is my Husbando Incineroar right here. So they're going to go for Astral Barrage as Incineroar is going to take this reasonably well because we have, you know, we're not Assault Fest or anything, but we're just you know, big daddy and center roar. So we're going to protect from that play rough. And now I'm going to go for the fire spin. <laughs> so I have fire spin with binding ban on incentive roar because I thought it'd be funny. And on top of that, um, it traps. So you have another way to do parish song. And my opponent was so gagged at that fire spin. They just rage quit. Um, okay. So fire spin and center roar won us the game right there. Like they were just so gagged. Like they lost for sure. They could have just ran away, but no, they were so shook. They just, dc They saw Fire Spin Ensign and they turned their game off. And you know what? I understand. So I decided to make a second Celebi team because I figured Paris Trap Celebi for this entire video wouldn't make for the most entertaining content. So I decided to spoil y'all and use a physical Celebi team because Celebi 
Physical Celebi was the second most voted option on the poll I made, so I decided to use I decided to use a Physical Celebi. And the rest of my Pokemon, Reshiram, Zekrom, Zamazenta, Mewtwo, and Tapu Fini, literally <laughs> six legendaries, and I love that for us. As my opponent also has six legendaries, well, they also have Whimsicott instead of a six legendary, but honestly, Whimsicott is better than like 90% of legendaries and doubles anyway, so, and some of y'all might think I'm being a crybaby for that, but those who play doubles actually realize how frustrating Whimsicott could be to deal with. And speaking of the devil, my opponent's gonna lead off with Whimsicott and the Zacian. So, um, they're both Chinese, of course, of course, as I'm gonna lead off with my very beautiful shiny Celebi from the Zerud movie and my Mewtwo. And I know my opponent is going to double target the Celebi because I just got the no fun zone vibes from this lead. So I figured that if I keep Celebi in, it's going to be a dead onion. So I decided to switch out of my Celebi, even if it means sacking off something else because I don't want Celebi to go down. I was on the casual ladder trying to have fun, but my opponent clearly was not trying to have fun because they lit off with a uh, Tailwind and Behemoth Blade. So they're gonna go for Behemoth Blade and not Pranks or Tailwind, very surprisingly. Targeting down my Celebi, which definitely would have one-shot me because I am a physical attacking Celebi with no defensive EV, so that definitely would have KO'd me. I'm going to go for be the uh, Will-O-Wisp into the Zacian to neuter this broken-ass doggo so it can't Behemoth Blade my whole team to death. And my opponent decides to go for Trick Room because they didn't know what Celebi did. They're like, this shit's probably going to set up Trick Room, what else is it going to do? And they set up Trick Room for me, which is nice because Mewtwo and Reshiram are both slower than Zacian. So I'm going to actually switch back into my Celebi, expecting them to uh, target down my Mewtwo because I figured that um, they're burned anyway, so I should be able to take an attack from the Zacian. And, you know, worst case scenario, I lose Celebi. Oh no, boohoo. But they just go for Play Rough into my Mewtwo and, you know, the Moonblast into Celebi. And now I can go for the Fling, which is the combo I wanted to go for. Turn one, go for the Fling lands at Barry into my Celebi. And we're going to nom 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 on our lands at Barry, which gives you a uh, focus energy effect increasing your crit rate and we're gonna activate our weakness policy so that's really good for us and now what we can do is we can just dynamax our celebi our beautiful shiny celebi go for max mindstorm into the zation and do a really good chunk of damage because we do land a nice 50 percent critical hit and now we can go set up that psychic terrain for our mewtwo to follow it up with an expanding force. Normally this wouldn't actually work because uh, Celebi's outspent my Mewtwo, but because the opponent set up Trick Room for us, very kindly, we're able to go for expanding force and knock out the Zacian and bring Wimpscott down to its focus dash. And we're able to knock out this annoying ass sword doggo and the Wimpscott realized that she fucked up and she's like, wait, 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 hold on. Let me reset that Trick Room because my opponent isn't using a Trick Room team. And I'm like, you bet. Wimsicott, sorry honey, and now they're gonna bring in the ground on the what what is that name? Anyway, they're gonna bring in their madman, the drought ground on, and this ground on is very mad because they're about to dynamax the ground on, and now they're gonna set up the prankster tailwind because Wimsicott is so broken it can run trick room and tailwind just because it can, you know? That's really fun. They're gonna go for Max Quake into my Mewtwo for some reason because they didn't want to target down Celebi. I'm pretty sure I could have lived an attack from ground on unless it was like Max Flare. That could have been pretty bad, but um, thankfully just go for the Max Quake into the Mewtwo, knocking me out. And unfortunately for them, I'm actually a physical Celebi and not a special Celebi. We're going to go for the Max Overgrow into this Ground Down, which might even be Assault Vest. We have no idea, but this Ground Down is going to get eviscerated by a physical Max Overgrow crit, which, you know, it's 50%, so I don't feel bad because my opponent had Zacian, so I don't feel bad. And we're going to knock out one shot their restricted uber ground on dynamax goodbye and that means we just won the game because we have dynamax and they do not and they are going to bring out their last pokemon and that is going to be the um keldeo yeah so they're going to bring out the uh keldeo the hoenn champion well good for you keldeo and i'm about to bring in my tapu Funi. so imagine being this keldeo right now sitting in front of a dynamax celebi and a tapu Funi. Like, it, that's so scary. Like, that, that's literally Keldeo's, like, worst matchups possible besides, like, Toxapex. Like, that's so funny to me that this, like, poor... this. Okay, now I kind of feel bad because they're trying to use Keldeo and Keldeo just, like, can't do anything. We're even going to dodge their Icy Wind, which wouldn't have killed us. But, yeah, we're going to easily dodge that Icy Wind. And now we are going to... What do we do here? We go for Max Airstream. That's right. We go for Airstream into the Whimsicott because we actually have Dual Wing Beat as well because Dual Wing Beat is obviously 
a physical attack for max airstream. We get a crit as well on the women's cot because we're just putting salt on the wound at this point. We're just like disrespecting the opponent. <laughs> oh yeah, but down goes women's cot. And now we're going to click, what do we do? Yeah, we just click heal pulse into the uh, Salabi slot, getting all of our health back. And now I wanted to go for the, um, so our Dynamax is going to end and they just forfeit, but I wanted to go for the Psycho Cut and get that guaranteed critical hit, which is the whole reason why we had Fling Land Zipberry, but unfortunately the opponent doesn't give it to us. So hopefully you all enjoyed that battle, and let's move on to the last battle of this video. Okay, my final opponent, Lily, has Talonflame and five Ubers, so that's really cool. Okay, not exactly Ubers, but you know, Talonflame plus five legendaries, so basically the same team as the last opponent who had Whimsicott plus five legendaries. But yeah, let's just get into this final battle against Lily, who had a pretty cute trainer card, I won't lie. Her trainer card was serving. And yeah, so my opponent is going to lead off with the Zeraora and the Ground on. Both legit Chinese, of course, of course, because my opponents in this video are just really good at Chinese hunting. Like, I could never. I'm going to lead off my Shiny Celebi, which is the event Celebi from the Zerud movie. And it's actually really cool because my opponent also had a Zerud. Well, actually, the pre previous opponent had a Zerud as well. So it's funny to see this a Shiny Celebi just fight against Zerud twice in a row. So the opponent's going to set up the Drought and go for Protect with the Ground Dung because they were just so shook by Celebi, they, they just had to Protect. And now they're going to go for the Coaching, so maybe they thought I was going to go for like a Leaf Storm or something, Leaf Storm Ice Beam. That's understandable, so they just wanted to Protect to fade out what I wanted to do. But unfortunately for them, they just gave me the freest turn of my life. I'm able to go for the Fling into my Celebi, and we're going to, of course, Nom 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 on that Landsat Berry, giving us increased critical hit rate. And we're going to activate our weakness policy. So that's really great for us. We're going to get increased attack, special attack. And now I'm going to go for a Leaf Blade into the ground down. But unfortunately, they're going to protect themselves. But this Leaf Blade being protected is actually really good. Because I think this made the opponent think that they could just go for coaching, base tank, whatever they wanted. And then, you know, go from there. Because if I was like special Celebi, they'd probably go to Dynamax. But because they are, um, they think, you know, they are safe in this situation, they could just you know, go for coaching again and face take whatever, right? But because I have guaranteed critical hits with Leaf Blade and Psycho Cut on my Celebi, I'm just going to ignore these coaching boosts and just one shot the Groudon with the Leaf Blade. So my opponent miscalculated there and were able to just obliterate their Groudon. But if they Dynamax there, they probably would have just lived that and I would have been in a much worse position. But thankfully, they didn't go for the broken mechanic. And now they are going to decide to bring in Zerud, and I'm going to switch out of my Mewtwo because it's kind of useless in this situation. I'm going to bring in my Zamazenta because I can't go for Will-O-Wisp because of the Leaf Guard from the Zerud, so I can't really go for Will-O-Wisp, and Icy Wind won't really benefit me too, too much. Icy Wind would have benefited me a lot because actually they just bring in the Zerud and Dynamax Daddy Zerud, it's the Zerud Dada form, and Celebi's like, oh, oh yes, yes Daddy, because I decided to Dynamax my Celebi as well. So <laughs> I'm going to Dynamax my Celebi and I'm going to show it just because it's literally the Zerud Dada event fighting against the Celebi event from the mo same movie. So I had to show off this Dynamax animation. So we're going to Dynamax our gorgeous shiny Celebi. And she's so cute. Look at her. She's serving. And, um, yeah, we're going to Dynamax our Celebi. And now we are going to... Do we max guard? No, we don't. We just... Oh, this, that thing outspeeds us. How does it outspeed us? Zerud's base 105 speed, right? Oh, that's probably why. Okay, Celebi's only base 100. And I'm adamant nature, so, yeah. Um, we're going to take a max darkness reasonably well. And now we are going to go for a max airstream into the daddy Zerud. And because Celebi just loves her man so much, we're going to just one shot the Zerud with the max airstream and get a crit, which definitely mattered, I'm pretty sure. But you know what? Celebi doesn't care about no men. No men can stop her. She's just a queen, an MB boss queen. That's who Celebi is. Everyone thought Celebi fell off, and they did, but Celebi is here to prove y'all wrong. And here, we're gonna go for coaching. Oh wait, no, sorry. I read <laughs> I read their aura Zamazenta. I'm sorry. Um, I have coaching on my uh, Zamazenta as well, so I read that. I misread that. Anyway, they're gonna bring in Calyrex thinking that they could just revenge kill us with the Astral Barrage, but no, we have Max Guard. Oh wait, why did I go for- Okay, wait. Yeah, I go for max guard and coaching, right? Is that what I do? No, I go for Behemoth Bash. What am I even doing? I don't know. I go for Behemoth Bash into the Calyrex to break a potential Focus Sash, I'm pretty sure. Is that what I do? Yeah, that's what I do. I go for Behemoth Bash into the Calyrex and break a potential Focus Sash because Calyrex commonly carry Focus Sash. And we're going to block Astral Barrage with max guard. And now we're going to take uh, max. We're going to take Astral Barrage with our Zamazenta. We take it reasonably well. And they go for Electro Web as well, which is not what I was expecting. But hey, they have Electro Web on their Zero Aura for speed control, so that makes sense. 
and uh, I don't remember this battle too too well. I only remember the last battle, <laughs> but um, I'm gonna go for a wide guard. That's right. We're gonna go for a wide guard because I wanted to block the Astral Barrage and Electro Rev. As we're gonna go for a Max Mindstorm into the uh, Zero Aura and just one shot them because of the plus two. And do we get a crit? Yeah, we do. <laughs> This Celebi just has guaranteed crits, even though it's not even guaranteed Celebi. It's just like, I'm going to crit all these bitches. So I love that for Celebi. So we're going to activate the Psychic Terrain. Now I got the Zero Aura, and we're going to block the Astral Barrage. So that's really good for us. And now our Dynamax is going to wear off. I do believe, yeah, our Dynamax is going to wear off. And so is the Hearth Sunlight. So um, now it's no longer sunny in the Celebi Stadium. And um, Dynamax is going to wear off. And now, I'm just trying to stall because Dynamax animations take so freaking long. Oh my gosh. Wait. What? Oh yeah, I had to show off the crit boost. Yeah, crit boost, psychic terrain, plus two. That's right. So I click Psycho Cut into the Calyrex, and we're able to outspeed because of the max airstream, and we're going to just guarantee crit the Calyrex and psychic terrain, and show Calyrex who the real psychic type legendary is. So we're going to knock out the Calyrex, and we're able to defeat our opponent Lily with physical Celebi getting those crits every turn. So hopefully you all enjoyed the Celebi video. Let me get you all the rental teams. Okay, so here is the Parish Trap Celebi team I made. Um, this team is honestly really good. It got me top 500 Master Ball, so that's pretty cool. I did make some minor adjustments with this team. I decided to replace Citrus Berry on Celebi with Clover Berry just to make our matchup versus Yavoltal a little bit easier because otherwise Max Darkness just one-shots us if it's special. I guess we get intimidated if it's physical, but yeah. Um, beyond that, we have Healing Wish to um, give us another way to pivot in Gothitelle or just another Pokemon in general. Give us backup support. Healing Wish's powers. None of y'all should forget about Healing Wish's powers. Even though I didn't go for it in this video, like we have Healing Wish Ally Switch on Gothitelle. We have Healing Wish to bring back our like Max Lapras. Like, trust me, it's good. We have Trick Room just for a way to reset Trick Room and just to give us a way to easily set up the secondary Parish Song. And we have Parish Song as well on the Celebi. And then our secondary Parish Song user is Lapras with Parish Song, Protect, Dive, Ice Shard. Um, dive and Ice Shard are good flex options. If you want to Dynamax the Lapras, set up some uh, screens so I can saw out their Dynamax and then go for a late game Parish. You know, it's not too bad, but it's mostly meant to go for Parish Song and then go for that Custet Berry Dive gimmick I went for in the very first battle. And then we have the shiny uh, Eternal Just like I got from GameStop. It's just meant to like stall a Dynamax and deal a Dynamax essentially. And then we have Sub Protect with Black Sludge. Uh, pretty self explanatory. Um, and Cinderor has Fire Spin Protect with Binding Band to just trap stuff in, give us another way to trap stuff in from Parish Song potentially, or just for Fire Spin chip damage. Otherwise, Instant Set's basically really standard. Protect's another way to stall some more Fire Spin chip damage. And I figure Flareless Ensign isn't really too optimal because you want Ensign to survive for as long as possible anyway. So I want to try out Binding Band, Fire Spin, Ensign. Because could you imagine Ensign or Binding Banding? Oh my god, that's kind of hot. Anyway, um, we got Weakness Policy of Voltal to go along with the Ice Shard Lapras, of course. And we just have Gothitelle trap stuff in. Protect, Fake Out, Ally Switch, Helping Hand. Yes, it does get taunted and it's useless, but honestly... If you get your Gothitelle taunted, you can just switch out, reposition, it's not the end of the world. So that is the first team. Okay, and the second rental code is honestly not very viable. I only messed around with it on the casual ladder, so I didn't really test with it nearly as much as the Parish team, but we got the Fling Lens at Bear Mewtwo into the Weakness Policy Celebi, and then obviously you have guaranteed crits with Cycle Cut and Leaf Blade, and then Dual Wing Beat is good for Max Airstream. And then beyond that, we have Baton Pass to bring out either, you know, Zekrom, Zamazenta, Reshiram, late game, in case Celebi just can't quite clean up the game itself. So yeah, Baton Pass can be pretty useful. Like, we have a very standard Zamazenta to coach and give more boost to the Celebi. Um, we have Soak Top Affinity to synergize with the Celebi. Um, it barely outspeeds Celebi, so it can go for Soaks before it goes for the Guaranteed Crit Leaf Blades. Um, and then we have a Mist, so we have more options versus Intimidate, because Intimidate makes physical Celebi very sad. So we have Mist for that. And beyond that, our team is very standard. If you, have any, if you have any other questions about these teams, leave them all in the comments down below. This video is getting a little bit too long. Thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. I love you all very, very much, and I'll check you guys in my next video.